and welcome to this video tutorial on how to make the Liger Bay collage in the Made By Me kits. If you've got this kit you may have been given it as a present or you may have purchased it yourself. So I hope you have a lot of fun making it and over the next 20 minutes or so I'll show you how to make all the coloured papers and how to put the uh, collage together so it looks similar to this. Remember your artwork will be unique to you and that's part of the, the adventure, it's part of the fun of these Made By Me kits. Even though you've got the guidelines of how to make the artwork, yours will be different to somebody else's but the journey that you take when making these papers is such fun and hopefully it will inspire you to create more work. If you familiarize yourself with the pack you'll find that you've got all the materials that you need including some patterns and a numbered pattern guide like this. You'll also have some cartridge paper which you'll use to make the coloured papers. There's extra sheets in there in case you decide to make more papers or there's some something that you make and you don't like it. You've also got a set of paints and the paints are actually labelled for you so you can see which colour is which. And as I go along I'll talk to you about these different colours like lemon yellow for instance. You will just use those particular colours on your paint tray. Now talking about the paint tray I would use something like this which is just an ice cream container lid but you could use an old plate as well. And between colours like for instance when you make the yellow paper it's a good idea that once you're finished with the yellow colours that you actually wash out your tray and change your water so that it's nice and fresh for the next colour. You also need something like a water container and I just use an, again an ice cream container like this but you can use any vessel at all. Paper towels are always useful, an old rag. So let's start. We're going to begin with uh, making the yellow paper. You're going to need these paints here. So we've got white, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, light brown and dark brown. And these are the quantities that you'll need to make this paper. You're going to begin by taking your sponge and putting it in the water. Make sure you squeeze some of the water out and then take some of the lemon yellow and just sponge it right across the page like this. And then do the same with the yellow ochre and that way we've got a background to work with. Then the next thing you'll do is you'll use your brush, you'll use your sponge and your cotton buds and we're going to make some different textures on the paper. So I'll do that now and then I'll show you what it looks like. Right, here we are, I've finished the yellow papers. As you can see, it's fairly random. I've used a sponge over here in the corner. I've just been dipping my sponge into different colors on my paint tray. I've mixed up some of the colors on my paint tray, so I've got lighter and darker colors. I've used the doily here with the white paint just um, sponged on top. I've used a cotton bud here dipped in that light brown and dabbed on. And over here, I've used a paintbrush. So again, I've just, it's a random sort of dabbing technique. You just want about four or five textures that you can use to make the sand. Now I've made the blue paper. This is going to be used for the sky and as well as this area down here. We could use a little bit for the hills but we'll make another piece for this area and this. These different textures have been made with these different colors. So we've got white, turquoise, blue, yellow ochre and black. Before I started I mixed up some colors using the white and the blue. So that's two different tones or two, two different values of blue, lighter and mid and here we've got a, a quite a dark one. If you look at the paper itself this here has been made by just dipping my brush into mid blue paint and dabbing it on accordingly. So dab, dab, dab and then putting some white over the top. Over here I've done the same sort of thing but I've used slightly darker colours and then I've got my cotton bud and I've just stuck it into the paint and swirled it around. So you've got quite a few cotton buds in your pack and just use as many as you need. So swirl around the white paint on top and then a little bit of dark. Same here, this is using a cotton bud as well in a swirling sort of fashion. A little bit of darker area here. This whole area is just supposed to resemble like clouds, cloud formations. And down here I've used the turquoise and I've sponged that on underneath. And then I've got my bubble wrap and I've just painted my bubble wrap using the sponge actually. And dipping it into the yellow ochre paint and then stamping it on. And over here I've put white onto the uh, bubble wrap and I've stamped that on. This is a second piece of paper I've made just to show you that even though I follow my guidelines, I get two quite different 
pieces. So they're not exactly the same and I don't expect yours will be the same either. So please don't worry if you can't create exactly the same textures or even the colours that I've shown you because really as long as you've got a range of different textures you'll be fine. This is the piece of paper that we'll use to make the hills in the background here. So you don't need a lot. The colour is slightly different. So we've used sort of more of a bluey green to create these colours. I I suggest you use these colors here we've got blue white a little bit of turquoise and a smidgen of the dark brown and that will just gray off your color a little bit so we, that creates this nice teal color so mix that up on your paint tray first and then also maybe mix up a little bit of dark blue and white together just spread these over your uh, page using your sponge and your brush we want these textures to be quite smooth rather than really obvious so have a go and see what you can do this is the paper that we'll use to make this bush line area here and also the uh, rocky shore and we'll use a little bit for the grasses at the front. You don't have to make quite as much as I've made. I've just filled up my whole page with different textures. I'll show you how to make these. So the colors you'll need, you've got both the greens, the grass green, blue green, you've got yellow, this is lemon yellow, black, dark brown, light brown and white. The background here has been applied with a, a sponge and then I've used my corrugated card and I've painted it again using the sponge with some lemon yellow paint and I've stamped it on top. Over here we've got the crumpled paper so just get a bit of uh, handy towel something like that and dip it into your black paint and then after you've got your background on you can dip, do this. You can also do the same with yellow and you can use a brush on top with some brighter yellow or a lighter green which you can mix up on your tray. Here this is the dark brown in the background and then I've used the little bit of card that's in your pack or you could also use an old credit card works really well and just paint the side of it with a range of different colours. I've used black, white, dark brown and lemon yellow just to make lines like this. Okay so you paint it, put it on, paint it, put it on otherwise you'll find you run out of paint. Over here again I've got more of a sort of stippled effect and I've used some of the bluer green in this as well. So starting with the grass green in the background and then smudging on a little bit of the blue green both with a sponge and with crumpled paper. Over here it's a bit darker and this bit here is for the rocky shore and this is made with a, a cotton bud dipped into grey paint. You make the grey with uh, obviously white and some black and mix it up first on your tray. So you've got these colours here all on your tray So and then you just dip into your tray and then apply the paint at like this and this is to resemble rocks. I've just put a bit of lemon yellow down here. I'm not sure if I'll even use it but it's there. Okay so hopefully yours looks a little bit like this so you've got some choice for those hillsides and the rocky shore. Now we're going to do the exciting bit which is actually put our collage together. You can cut these papers or you can rip the papers. You can follow the pattern exactly or you can make it up as you go along. I'm going to start with number one. I've cut it out from the pattern enclosed in the pack and I'm laying it on top of my blue paper where I think it might look quite nice and then I'm going to cut around it and I'm going to glue it on. The next thing I'll do is put on the, the pattern pieces number two. So there's a small piece here and a small piece there but as I say you can do your own like you can just put little random pieces on the sky if you like or you can cut exactly it doesn't matter just as long as they're slightly different and then I'll glue those on top and I'll show you what it looks like. Here's my finished sky you can see that I've actually added a couple of extra pieces. I've added some darker strips along the top and I've added a lighter strip in here. You too can do the same thing. So if you don't like the way it looks, you can always add extra. I think a sky always looks better if it's a little bit darker at the top than it is at the bottom. Start next on your hills and your mountains. That's pieces 3, 3A, 3B and 3C. And it's quite good if you can have some contrast in those. I've given you some suggestions here. So the background mountains just do in a, a sort of bluey green color and then if you can get a slightly darker bluey green that would be great a mid-tone bluey green and a lighter bluey green so uh, here we are I've placed them on here so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about I'll probably cut three out of this and then 3a out of the slightly darker color so there's some contrast 
3B out of this, and then the 3C can be out of that lighter color, so that, um, as I say, you've got some contrast. Before you glue these down, I think it's a good idea to cut out the foreground hills, so number four, um, both left and right, and I would use for this some of this corrugated stamp design because it looks quite cool, and then I may use a little bit of this. And then once I've got those cut out, I'm going to lay them on and just see how everything looks because the idea is that these are all layered pieces and you want to make sure that you cover the sides. So I'll cut those out and let's have a wee look. You can see now I've cut out the hills and I've actually used the bottom of that green paper for both pieces. So I've got those nice lines, this guy going vertically and then there's a few going on an angle there. Before I stick anything down, I just want to make sure I've covered in all the edges so there's no white showing underneath. So just give your mountains and your hills a little bit of a jig before you glue them on and make sure that your sky is covered as well. If you wanted to drop that down, for instance, you could always just slip another little piece of blue on there first and then glue the, the hillside on top. But I'll leave that over to you. That's part of the artistic journey really, just deciding how it looks for you. I've glued it all down now and I'm really happy with the finished result. It is different from the coloured picture that you've got in your pack but it doesn't matter because it still looks great and yours will too. I just realised when I popped this piece of paper down here you know, you've almost got a scene in itself. But anyway, we're going to start with the Rocky Shore next and that's pattern pieces number five. If you're having trouble cutting these out, I suggest that you turn over your page like this and turn over the pattern piece and draw around it with a... Um, a pencil or a pen and then cut it out with a very fine pair of scissors. If you're not having trouble then that's great, just lay it on like this and then just cut around. It doesn't have to be exactly, just similar. And then we're going to glue those pieces on here and here. This is the uh, finished piece with the rocky shore. I'm just going to show you to, if you are finding that all of your edges are a little bit uneven at this point, you can just get a strip of cartridge paper. So just cut a little strip off that extra piece of cartridge paper in your pack like this and then you can glue this down. That'll give you a nice clean edge to work with. I'm not going to worry too much because I think my edge is okay but if you find you've got bits and pieces just hanging down that's the way to fix it up. Now we're going to do the sand. You can see it doesn't go quite as far as the hills so we do need a bit of a gap between the bottom of the rocky shore and the sand and this edge is, looks really nice if it's ripped rather than cut. To get that ripped edge you can take your uh, yellow piece of paper and you can just uh, do this and just rip along the edge and then the rest of that area from on your pattern piece you can see this area here from there to there is filled with this yellow paper so I suggest that you start ripping it up into strips and laying it on where you think it looks nice perhaps having some of the lighter sand sandy color towards the bottom of the page and the darker up the top but it doesn't really matter here are the strips that I've ripped up and as you can see it's fairly random I've got some bigger than others and I'm not worried about it I'm just going to start gluing them down where I think they look nice you don't have to go right to the bottom but you do need quite a large area of yellow there just have fun and don't be afraid if you don't like something you can always glue something down on top Oh my goodness, now we've got the most exciting part. You can see I've glued down the sand. I've done it mostly in strips of ripped paper. You've now got to cut out pattern piece number eight and you've got the kodos. When I ran a class with this particular artwork, some of the students decided to put the kodos in different shapes. One student, in fact, just left them out completely. If you don't have enough blue paper to cut these all in one piece, which I'm doubting that you will, same for number eight, you could just do it in pieces. So I'm going to do that for the kodos. I'm going to cut them out in pieces using any leftover blue paper and the bluey green paper that I've got. I'm going to lay them down, have a look at it and see if I like it and then if I like it then I'm going to glue it down and you can do the same. I've got my kodos nearly finished. I cut out the pattern piece number seven and I glued bits of blue paper onto that pattern piece. I did it on top of a plastic background so this is just a bit of plastic and therefore it didn't stick. So I used lots of glue and random pieces of the painted blue paper. I'm quite happy with those. Same with here. This is all done in pieces. 
but it still looks quite nice. There's lots of movement. So when I think I'm, I'm about right, I'm going to glue those down and then I'm going to finish off with doing the boats and the grasses. And now we're going to do the finishing touches for our Liger Bay collage. You've got to cut out these grasses here and there's no pattern for this. I just suggest you get your piece of paper that you printed with the card and just randomly cut some strips so they can have slight angles on them. As long as they're sort of tapered at the top, you'll be fine. And I would cut maybe between 7 and 11 pieces and we'll just glue those on in the foreground. And then you've got the little boats that you've got in your pack. So you've been given four. You only need two. I just put four in in case you made a wee mistake. You just cut round those and glue them into, into place. The last thing you need to do is make the masts. And they are made by just ruling a piece of white paper. This one's four and a half centimetres long. This one's four centimetres long. And, and two millimetres wide. And then just cut these thin strips out and glue them above your boats. And then you're finished. I'm very happy with the end result. It's a little bit different to the first one that I made. But not greatly so. Yours might be a little bit different to mine. And you may have decided to leave off the corros, for instance. But... Whatever you've done, I hope you've loved the process. I've certainly loved running this tutorial for you. You just need to trim all your edges here. If you want to paint the sides, you can. You can paint them like a yellow or a blue or even black looks quite nice. If you'd like to learn more about Made By Me kits, just go onto the web page and you'll see that there are other artworks available for you to do. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.